Welcome to a packed house at Don and Nona Williams Stadium on the campus of UW Stout here in beautiful Menominee, Wisconsin. I'm Chris Larson alongside, as always, Joel Eby, and we got a big one tonight in the Big Rivers Conference game for the conference championship. Whoever wins will be an outright title winner here in 2012 in the Big Rivers Conference. Menominee 7-0, the Hudson Raiders 7-0. Joel, are you excited or what? This is a big one. I'm, I got butterflies in my stomach. This is, uh, this is a big game. This is, uh, you know, like I said, both teams 7-0. Both teams playing very well. Both uh, soundly defeating their opponents all year. Um, I just can't wait for the kickoff. We're going to pause for just a moment for the national anthem. We apologize to you at home. You probably couldn't hear it. The Menominee High School band playing on the far side of the bleachers from where we are. And one good sign that we've seen from this Hudson Raider football team all season long, you can tell you got a pretty good football team when the press box is just a packed house. <laughs> we've had a hard time getting into some press boxes this season. We're going to be shooting this game as we did at Superior uh, from out with the crowd. So yep. we're yep. going to hang out with everybody else and, sh and shoot this game. It should be a good time. But, Joel, Two just powerhouse football teams this season. Both these schools have just been crushing people. You've got uh, the Hudson Raiders coming in here, winning games by an average of 38 to nine, and Menominee outscoring opponents 31 to 11. So both teams with dominant performances throughout the season. You know, and the one statistic we talked about a little earlier off air, but the, the statistic that stands out in my mind, Menominee has only given up seven points in the first half all season. Hudson has scored 187 points in the first half. They've scored over 100 points in the first quarter. So really, that's what it's going to come down to. If Hudson can get out to a fast start and score some points in the first half, I think it's going to go Hudson's way. So you've got two teams that they're kind of going against each other as far as their strengths. The uh, Hudson Raiders are quick starters, and the Menominee Mustangs are a team that are able to keep the other squad off the board. And really, we talk defense. These Raiders only giving up about nine points a game. Most of the points that the Raiders give up are in the second half when uh, the Raiders have really have had a lot of second-team players in there. But Menominee's really had a, some of the same, where they've uh, had a lot, of, a lot of games where I'm sure that they've had some of their guys that maybe aren't starters on the field in the second half. Well, that's what you're exactly right, Chris. That's, that's the mirror images of these two teams. You know, they both play real similarly. Uh, Menominee has a real balanced attack. Uh, they've got about 950, 960 yards rushing to about 700 uh, 97 to 800 yards passing, so a real a balanced attack. Where Hudson is, you know, as we've seen, very lopsided to the running or to the running game with over 1,400 yards rushing this year. Well, we've got uh, two very good programs in the Menominee Mustangs, who have been a great program, really under Coach Joe Labuda's tutelage since the late 80s. And then we've got the Hudson Raiders under Coach Cowles' uh, up-and-coming program. Coach Cowles took over seven years ago and has finally got this team to a point where if we win tonight, it'll be the first undefeated season for the Hudson Raiders since the 1960s. And, you know, Chris, too, both these teams, regardless of what happens tonight, they're both going to – their seasons are going to continue into the playoffs. Uh, Menominee with an enrollment of about uh, just under 1,000 at 999. We'll go into Division II playoffs. Hudson with uh, 1660 enrollment. They'll go into Division I playoffs. So regardless of what happens tonight, but I know that this game means more to the Hudson Raiders as far as, you know, the season goals and anything else because of that fact that it is an outright championship. Yeah, they've never won an outright Big Rivers Conference championship. So uh, it would be a, a big chunk of history that we could see tonight well, here for the Hudson Raiders. You know, in the 2009 season when uh, Hudson did uh, have just one blemish on their record, they did beat Menominee that year, and uh, that was uh, – the start of really big things for us, and that was the second year in a row they'd beaten Menominee, and Menominee hasn't beat them since. So, um, you know, there's a lot of things that, that at work here, but it's going to come down to, I think, who can tackle better and who can hit harder. Uh, the uh, Menominee Mustangs bring with them a very balanced attack. Uh, they've got a quarterback in Dakota Paulson who uh, has thrown for over fi 500 yards this season. And uh, they also had the second best running game in the conference. Now, Dakota Pulse, he has, he has thrown for nine touchdowns, and the run, running game has accounted for 14 or 15 touchdowns. And you look at Hudson, they've got 20, 24 or 27 rushing touchdowns. Lockney alone has accounted for as many rushing touchdowns as the whole Menominee team. So I think that's what it's going to come down to. Can Hudson run the ball on Menominee? If they can, I think this game's going to go a lot like the last few have. 
One trend to follow, though, uh, Dakota Paulson, the quarterback for Menominee, has only thrown the ball seven times per game in the last two games. Now, of course, those two games were kind of blowouts where they probably didn't need to throw the ball a lot. But if you look at his early season stats, he had a couple 25 pass games, and then uh, kind of towards the middle of the season, they were throwing the ball around 15 times a game. So we'll keep an eye on how many times Paulson throws the ball tonight for Menominee. And it's like Hudson's going to kick off here. So we'll get to see that Hudson defense right away. And that's a big thing this season. Hudson's kick coverage team has such, done, done such an excellent job of pinning their opponents deep in their own territory and giving them a long field. Somerville to kick off. He kicks deep. Kick's going to be fielded at around the two-yard line. And the Mustangs runner will bring it up to about the 23-yard line. And again, that coverage team that we've seen has been so effective this season, effective once again there. Looked like big Alex Burgess was down there early and got kind of a paw on the, on the return man and slowed him down a little bit for the rest of the guys to get there. But a couple injuries to take note of. Uh, the Raiders, Blake Amborn will not play this week for the second week in a row. He's got a back injury. And for the Mustangs, they're really their second best receiver and one of their best linebackers, James Gates, broke his ankle last week. He will not be playing for the Mustangs. Dakota Paulson under center. Trying to draw the Raider defense off sides. And they will pitch it around to the right side. And Nothing happening. The Raiders wraps him up and pulls him down. It's going to be a loss there, probably of a yard or two. Looks like Jared Johnson in there for the Raiders right away. Jared Johnson, a sophomore, has been a man child down there for the Raiders this season. Can't wait to see what he develops into next year. Jared Johnson and Benoit, and it looks like they were the two main tacklers in that play. And that's what the Raiders are going to need to do tonight. They're going to need to stop that rushing game. Make Menominee be one-dimensional. Make them throw the ball. Maybe Hudson come up with some turnovers and some big plays. They've done it all season. Loss of two for Menominee. They've got a receiver wide to the left. They'll run the draw. Actually, they will pass the ball, and it's batted down again. That is Johnson in there and making some serious disruption. This is one of the things that we had talked about coming into this game. If the Raider defensive line could win the battle at the line of scrimmage, it could be a long night for Menominee. And so and far in the first two plays, the Raider defensive line have looked pretty good. And that's going to be the big thing, getting pressure on Paulson, making him throw the ball before he wants to so those long pass plays can't develop. So third and 12 here, Menominee sends two receivers wide to their right. They've got a tight end on the end of the left side of the line, and they will run the draw this time, and, and that goes nowhere. Alex Burgess with the stop. Alex Burgess wraps him up, sends him back, and we're going to be sending the Menominee punt team onto the field here. Well, that's kind of what we wanted to see. That's, that's I'm sure, all the coaching staff wrote it up before the game. Quick three and out for Menominee, get the offense on the field and see if we can get an early touchdown. Joe Kelly back deep for the Raiders, standing around the 45-yard line of Hudson. Snap is good, not much pressure. The punt is off, and it's a nice deep one. Kelly is going to try to return it, gets it at the 45, and he's going to be wrapped up and pulled down at around the 46. So not okay. much of a return there for Kelly. And, and we'll see the Raider offense for the first time. That's good field position for the Raiders. I mean, you know, anytime you can start close to the midfield stripe, that's good field position. It gives you a lot less distance to go and also a lot less opportunities for mistakes. <clears throat> So they'll switch out the Hudson Raider football and we'll be ready to go. Mike Holmes under center for the Raiders tonight. Dan Lotney behind him. Uh, looks like Hunter Fry, the left wing, and Kelly on the right. They'll send Fry in motion. Hand it off to Lotney up the middle, and Hotney's going to pick up about two or three on first down. And, you know, Manami's always tried to do the job with her, with her defensive linemen is try to pinch those linemen in and take up four or five of the offensive linemen with those three defensive linemen, which will for, allow the linebackers to come up and make the tackle. That's just what happened there. Raiders right back up to the line of scrimmage, and they will run the option around the left side. Holmes takes it himself. He's got yards. Still on his feet. Still on his feet, and he's going to have the first down. One of the things I talked to you a little bit about before the game, if we got a second here, uh, I did some highlight tapes for some parents last weekend, and I don't get a chance to really see the line play too much. I'm shooting the game. I'm watching the ball. But some of the blocks that those guys in the offensive line have thrown this season are just incredible. Hence the 1,400 yards rushing. And Fumble! the ball comes Oh, loose. no! Who, who, uh, Menominee, Menominee says, says they, they have it, it but 
We're going to have to see who's got it. Some miscommunication Ooh, on the handoff. Hudson will keep the ball. Boy, the Raiders that could have been disastrous. It, it, those so. are things that Hudson has been so good at all season, except for the last two games. They've had four turnovers the last two games. They haven't turned the ball over much this season. We're very fortunate to avoid a turnover there. That was the first time we've seen the pistol formation, and Raiders back in it here. They'll run a man in motion, and Holmes pitches it. And again, the ball no, comes loose, was this time Menominee has it. Oh. Tried to run the option around the right side. The linebackers disrupted that play. And Holmes pretty much pitched it right to a Menominee player. Lucky that didn't go back for six. And, you know, we've talked about the decision-making of Mike Holmes this season. He's done a good job. I think that's one of those spots where he should have just hung on to the ball. There was more defense, defensive players in the backfield than there were offensive players. And this is one of those spots, Joel. You know, this Raider football team has been so dominant throughout the season. We haven't been challenged. I, I really was wondering how this team would act when they are challenged. We're going to find out right here tonight. Spadomini football team isn't going to go away quietly. Paulson back to pass. Paulson overlooks the defense. Yes! Taken down. And again, the Raider pass rush unrelenting. That was Magadens in on the blitz. Linebacker for Hudson. And that, he just hung on to the ball too long. He's going to remember that because that may force him to get rid of the ball a little earlier next time and maybe throw an interception. Yeah, Dylan Magadance was initially blocked there, and uh, he just didn't quit. Paulson set himself to pass, and Magadance had him from behind. Two receivers wide to the right of Paulson, and Paulson will hand it off on the draw. Ooh. The Raider defense. <laughs> Covering it up, and it's going to be a very short gain. It's going to bring up a that third down and very long here for Menominee, about third and 11, coming up here with 8.15 left in the first quarter. Scoreless with the Hudson Raiders and Menominee Mustangs. Well, now they've each had a possession, and there's kind of, you know, the, the butterflies should be working, working their way out of the system, and hopefully we'll get down and see some good Raider football next time they get the ball back on offense. Mustangs send a man in motion. And Paulson drops the pass. Has some time, throws it deep down the field, and it's going to be incomplete. Overshot his man on the right side. Looking for Luke Stanley. Stanley is the leading receiver on the Menominee squad. And what that did do is that fumble did create a turnover in field position where now the Raiders are going to be, at best case scenario, starting with the ball at their 20-yard line. A major shift in field position due to that turnover. But we've seen the Raiders go on some long drives this year. Menominee so far in offense, two drives, they've net minus four yards. Yeah, we'll see the Raiders run one back here. Low punt, or low snap, and they Gets get it the off. off. Oh, it's going to take a Menominee bounce inside the 15. Oh, They will down the ball at around the 12-yard line. Boy, you would like to see the Raiders get a little more pressure in there, maybe get a chance of blocking that. That ball was on the ground for a long time. The punter did a great job of getting that up and getting it off. Yeah, they certainly haven't sent any pressure either one of these uh, last two punts trying to set up a return for Joe Kelly. So this will be the second time we see the Raider offense. They were able to pick up a first down before turning it over on their last possession. This time stuck deep in Menominee territory. Alex Herring, the wide receiver, to Holmes' is left. Holmes under center. They'll send Fry in motion, and Holmes is going to keep it and not get much. They'll give him two and set up second down and eight. Holmes under center once again this time. Oh, they'll give it to Lotney, and Lotney's going to pick up Maybe a yard. It's going to set up a third down and seven coming up for the Raiders. And again, if you watch that Menominee defensive line, all they're doing is they're, 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 they're not even looking for the tackle. All they're doing is crashing and trying to take up those offensive linemen Hudson. And they've done such a good job all year of getting to the second level and blocking those linebackers. And that's what's allowed a lot of the, some of the big runs. And Holmes in the pistol will look to throw it here. Under severe pressure, gets away from it. Now he's going to run it. And he's going to have, have the, the first, first down. down. Oh, they, they're going to mark it short? No, no, no. There they go. 
Holmes really should have been sacked. The uh, Menominee defender came untouched from the left side. Holmes eluded the pressure and took it around the right side and found himself the stick. Holmes in his best Ben Roethlisberger imitation and just brushed the defensive player out of his way. So Holmes all set here with the Raider offense now at the 25-yard line. Got themselves some breathing room. And they will hand Reverse it off. Up the middle. Big room for Fry. Fry's going to pick up about seven. And that'll set up a second down and short for Hudson. Haven't seen Fry carry the ball much. He played last week. Uh, well, didn't see too many carries, but a nice one there for Fry. And that's a result of Amborn being out. Raiders will set up in the pistol formation this time. Now Holmes comes up to the line of scrimmage. Going to be under center with Lotney right behind him. They'll send Fry in motion, and they'll hand it off to Lotney. Lotney doesn't get anything. So third Boy, and down and about two coming up here for Hudson. Looks like that linebacker on this side is just cheating right up the line of scrimmage. Look, he was almost over the line. And I'm sure Hudson will try to draw him off sides here. Holmes barks out the calls, and they will run the option. Got it, Fryer on the other side. He's going to have first the first down. down. That will move the chains once again for Hudson, their third first down of the, of the evening. And again, now we're getting into that area where at least now we've, we're, we're turning that field possession, the position over again. Hudson's getting the ball. If they can get it out to midfield here at least, that would be a, a win as far as this possession goes. Get some rhythm in your offense. 541 left in the first quarter. Holmes under center, and he'll give it to Lotney on Lottie. the left side. Lotney's got about five or six on first down. And those are the kind of first down runs we're used to with Dan Lotney. Somebody lost their helmet. No, he's got to he's gonna have to come off the field for a play. It's a new rule in high school football this season. If your helmet comes off, you're out for a play. They want to really emphasize everyone strapping up. And that's what's going to help them uh, prevent concussions. If you don't have that helmet strapped, it can't protect you the way it's designed to. And Holmes back to pass. He'll fake the handoff, throwing it downfield. And oh, it's going to be incomplete. He, he waited too long to throw that ball. Fry was open. Hanging out of the ball for the extra second, gave the safety a chance to get over there and knock that ball down. That was open. Fry still had an opportunity, but uh, well defended by the Mustang defender when he made it over there. So third down and about five here coming up for Hudson. And once again, the Raiders will run the option to Fryer on the right Nothing side. Nothing This time there. he's pulled down after a gain of about two, and we should see the Raider punt team come onto the field. Well, who's going to do the punting tonight? Looks, Looks like, like Mike, Mike Holmes. Holmes will stay on the field. And you know, we talked about earlier in the warm-ups, you know, Lon Carr was out there warming up, booming the kick off, the punts off his foot, but yet they bring in Holmes to do the punting. I think they had Lon Carr punting in the warm-ups to warm up the, the punt receivers because Holmes was holding the uh, field goal practices. And it's a nice punt. It's going to be fielded around the 18-yard line by Menominee. They'll nice take it job! The line. Once again, our coverage team all over it. Now, and they moved that ball up to the 17. That's what we were He tried going back to get around the defender, and they still gave him the 17. Boy. All right, well, now it's time for that Hudson defense to stand strong again. and We've switched fields. Once again, we're playing on the Menominee side of the football field now, thanks to those three first downs. Menominee so far tonight, again, has uh, two drives resulting in negative four yards. See what they can come with, come up with here in their third possession. And Paulson will hand it off. And once again, <laughs> Raider defense Man. stifling on that <laughs> run game from Menominee. But they're going to remember that nobody went with Paulson. When he kept that bootleg, nobody went with him on that fake. If he would have hung on to that ball, he would have the whole near, near side of the field to run. And that's something that we, we often see Menominee do. They will run the bootleg. But, you know, and I was looking at the numbers. This quarterback this does not run the ball that often. Seen it a lot in the last four years yeah. <laughs> with this Coach Labuda yeah. team, though. Well, they got 
three receivers set up in trips on the right side. Paulson looking to throw, throws it out into the flats. He's got his We got man. a flag. I think we got a flag. We got a flag down. I think we're going to have a holding. There is a flag in the neighborhood of holding. Oh, they're going to say it's against Hudson. Oh, personal foul. Personal foul what on Hudson, that? so that's going to tack on 15, 15 yards to that through. completion. So that should bring the ball somewhere up to midfield. Don't bring it out to about the 46-yard line. Not sure who did what, but whoever it did, I wouldn't want to be them because when they get to the sideline, they're going to get an earful of Mr. Cowles. Well, he was talking to either Jared Berg or Benoit. Was it, it was one of the defensive linemen that he was talking to. So Should spot the ball at around the 46-yard line, so so much for that field position. First positive play for the Mustangs tonight. Paulson under center. They'll pitch it around the right side. And once Ooh. again, Raider defense <laughs> closes on him. <laughs> Looked like he was going to get away, and then Burgess came around and finished him off. Burns, but uh, either Burns or Shaw, but a big hit on him and kind of bounced off it. And then and Alex Burgess came in and cleaned it up for no gain. A lot of big hits so far in this game. A lot Those are going to take hits. their toll as the game goes on. Second and 10 now. For Menominee. And Paulson looking to throw. Throws it downfield. Oh. Had his man, but he dropped it. Wow. Once again, looking for Luke Stanley, and Stanley couldn't co hold on. Corum with the coverage. As with last week, that was six points taken off the board because he had the defender beat and he was in stride. If he catches that ball, I think he gets in the end zone. Nice looking throw there by Paulson. Put it right on him. 2.44 left in this first quarter. We're scoreless in a game for the Big Rivers Conference champion. Both of these teams come into this game 6-0 in the conference, 7-0 overall. Paulson in the shotgun, looking to throw under pressure. And the ball Get is stripped. Oh, I think he got it. Oh, they say incomplete. Oh. That was reminiscent of Stracota. Mr. Stracota. <laughs> Laid out for a ball a couple <laughs> years ago, and it was really about the same spot in the field, too. It was. The nose tackle dives for interception. It was saving a batted ball. Brings oh. up a fourth and ten, though, the incompletion. And once again, Menominee will set up a punt. Joe Kelly standing at the 20-yard line to receive it. And it's away. Kelly will call for a fair catch at the 25, right. and he makes it. One of the things that we've seen, Joel, is not a lot of pressure the Raiders have put on the punt team. And that was a spot. The down and distance wasn't really right for a fake, but this Menominee team's not afraid to go for a fake. Maybe that's something that Coach Collins is not going to send the rush, trying to kind of stay back for in case they do decide to run a fake. Well, yeah, you're right. Menominee has a long history of fake punts and, and burning Hudson on those punts. I remember one, it must have been uh, eight, ten years ago at Newton Field. Uh, they destroyed Hudson's chance of going to the playoffs by a fake punt. Holmes under center at the 25. They'll send Fry in motion. Fake the handoff. Holmes looking to throw. He's got it! Woohoo! Caught by Dan Boy. Lotney, and that was a dangerous pass. And he had Alex Herring wide open behind the secondary. It will be a first down for Lotney. It'll move the chains and bring the ball out to the 39-yard line. Wow. I don't think he had a lot of time there to get rid of that ball, but uh, uh, he had Herrick wide open. Holmes now in the shotgun, and they will hand it off to Fry. Fry's got a lot of room, and he's going to pick up about eight or nine yards. A big hole for Mr. Fry there on that play. Boy, that's not a good spot for the Raiders. Look like he had about a yard more than that. Second and about two and a half here coming up for Hudson. 158 remaining in the first quarter were scoreless. And they'll give it to Lotney. Lotney should, should have, have the first down. Depending on the spot. Needed to get to the 49 yard line. Who's I got the spot? Might, might need a measurement here depending on where they decide to 
to mark this. Well, the official on the far side walked away. The referee was looking for who has the spot. First down. All right. And they will. So no measurement needed. <laughs> they will move the chains. And based upon the spot, the Raiders definitely had it. They needed to get to 49. The football was on the left side of the 49. Clock ticking at 143, Raiders at midfield. Holmes under center, they'll send Kelly in motion and run the option around the right side. Holmes is gonna keep it. Holmes has got room, he's gonna get pushed out after he's gonna be real close to a first down. I think he's got it, he's past the 40. And that could be a difference in this game. Mike Holmes is probably one of the fastest, I know he's the fastest kid on the Hudson side of the ball. He could be the fastest kid on the field. And if he can get himself some room or he can make some cuts, he. And if he starts cutting it up, it's going to open up that outside edge a little better, too. So Raiders with the first and 10 at the Menominee 38-yard line. Holmes back under center. They'll send Kelly in motion to give it to Lotney up the middle. Lotney's going to have about two or three. No, the referee on the far side's got it marked at almost the 35. The, on the near side, has got it marked at the... 36. They'll go with the 36. Boy. You know, it, it's, it doesn't sound like it's a big deal, but every play, if you get just lose a, a, a foot or two on in field position, it adds up at the end of the game. And Holmes will run it again. Kicks it out to Fry. Cut it, Fry cut it back. It, cuts it back, but right. uh, it's going to be a gain of about four or five. Sets up a pretty manageable third okay. down here. And I think this is the area of the field, Chris, where it's, it's a two-down situation. Hudson's not going to punt here. Their defense is playing well enough. I think where Cowles will say, even if they don't get it, they're going they're for it on fourth down. Boy, and again, the spot is questionable. You've got Newell wide to the left for the Raiders. Herrink on the right side. Lotney behind Holmes. They'll send Kelly in motion and to give it to Fry. Fry oh, Fry's. First down and more. He's going to be down inside the 25 <laughs> yard line. And there's that block you were talking about. Brian Gaffin <laughs> pancaking a defensive player. I got a chance to see some of Brian's work last week, and he is just laying guys out, and he doesn't quit until the whistle blows <laughs> either. And he'll get to Lottie. He's got right some room. Side. Plenty of room, and he's going to be close to a first down. And you think this is one of those points, Joel, where maybe the Menominee defense is starting to wear out a little bit because the Raiders are picking them up in big chunks now. Mike's Holmes, where they're talking to the referee, felt he was hit a little late on that play. That was uh, Mike Holmes handed the ball off and still got. Raiders will call a timeout. Nope, that's no, the end, that's of, the first the end of the first quarter. Wow, what a first, fast first quarter. Lots of running. <laughs> the clock keeps on ticking, man. And, and, you know, this is the first game Hudson has not scored in the first quarter. It is. You talked about Menominee being so good at keeping people off the board in the first half of football games, and so far they've done it pretty well here. The Raiders are able to get this ball into the end zone here. It'll just be the second touchdown Menominee's given up in the first half of a football game this season. But, you know, the good news is, too, is Hudson's kept Menominee off the board, too. And, and Menominee's done – they've definitely outscored their opponents in the first half. They've been putting up some numbers in the first half. Not like Hudson, but got through their win in the ball game. Hence, you know, they've had a lot of those second half. They're getting a lot of, a lot of the uh, second-string kids in there. And yeah, both teams uh, – have enjoyed quite a few games this season where they've been able to, to get some guys into the game. One thing that, you know, we, we looked at the schedule tonight, and you've got really the two best teams in the conference, and I think everybody kind of knew going into this season that these were going to be the two best teams in the conference. These guys are going to beat each other up going into the playoffs here. Uh, this is going to be a physical game. We've seen it. Both sides of the football, uh, both teams are hitting. These teams are going are gonna to go into the playoffs coming off a pretty physical game. And the good news is they won't have to play next Tuesday. Yeah, that, that is true. Playoffs now are going to be a week out after the uh, last game of the season. So we'll be playing next Friday. And so here we are, second down and one for the Hudson Raiders. And Menominee looks like oh, we've got some motion no, for the Raiders. Motion. Oh, that's going to move it back five yards. So we go from a second one to a second six, and that changes things pretty drastically. But, you know, again, we're in four down that, territory. Four down territory. You've really got three plays. 
Holmes will set up in the pistol this time. Lockney still behind him. They'll send Fry in motion, and they'll give it to Kelly. Kelly going to pick up about four, maybe five yards there. He's going to get close to the first round, but he's going to be a little short. Looks like they're spotted right at the 15. So they'll give him three and a half to set up a third down and a short three for the Raiders. And I believe there it is. That'll, there up. they drew him. That was a linebacker they drew offsides. That wasn't even a lineman. That's something that Hudson has done well all season long. They tried to set it up in the first quarter. Menominee didn't fall for it. That time they did. Well, really, that just gets them the five yards back from their penalty. So, so the Raiders with a first down and goal at the ten yard line. Yeah, I don't think they can get a first down without getting a they touchdown. Cannot. So. Four downs to get a touchdown. But maybe this type of game, this is the type of game that if you do, you try a field goal. Holmes under center, they'll give it to Lockney. Oh, wide on open. He's touchdown. Go zone. Touchdown, Raiders. Boy, he made that look easy. The Hudson Raiders strike first blood here tonight in Menominee. It that took them a quarter, but they got into the end zone with 11-21 left in the first half. And that gets the huge Hudson crowd on their feet. There's a lot of people here tonight at Don and Nona Williams Stadium. And quite a few of them are here from Hudson. And isn't that good they scored at this end of the field? Right in front of the home Somerville crowd. Somerville will kick it, and it is going to be good. The there Raiders go. will take a 7 to nothing lead. All right, well, they didn't quite score in the first period, but they <laughs> quarter, quarter, but they only took them 40, 39 seconds of the second quarter to score. We talked about the schedule and this game being such a big game, the last game of the season. A couple other really big games in the Big Rivers Conference tonight. River Falls on the road at Rice Lake. The winner of that game will get a playoff berth. Then Eau Claire Memorial on their home field tonight, playing another team on their home field, Eau Claire North. Memorial, if they take care of business, they will also get into the playoffs. And then we've got the other game, which is kind of the consolation <laughs> game tonight. Chippewa Falls and Superior playing for pride. Now, I did hear a scenario where that Superior, if they won that game with three wins, could get into the playoffs. If, if the right teams fall. If the fall, right teams fall yeah. and they would take, be a sub-500 team that would make it, they would be one of them because of the, the strength of schedule or with, and basically that's because of Hudson and Menominee. Yeah. So it'll be a crazy bracketology well, early next week. Menominee's got some confusion on the return team. They're looking for another player. And they get him out that's there. It's probably due to that Gates not being in. They're looking for somebody to take his position. You know, that's the thing. You get these players on these special teams. You don't you don't really have a second string special teams. So Gates. really when, when they get hurt, you got to, you know, make a point of having somebody, you know, so talking to practice. You're the guy that's going to take his place. The importance of Gates, he's, he's an all-state player at both linebacker and tight end. Uh, pretty good football player. Yeah, and you hate to see that, you know, a kid uh, in his senior year, um, you know, like I said, got a lot of football left ahead of him and, to have this senior season cut short is just not a good thing. Kick by Somerville, fielded at the eight yard line. They'll bring it up the middle and the Raiders pursuit once yeah, again Iverson. right there. Iverson, Iverson will bring them down at the 24 yard line. Matt Iverson, a senior, five foot 11, 190 pounds. He's kind of all over the field. So Menominee was able to get one first down there on their last drive. And see what they can do here. This is their fourth possession. And realistically, Hudson's defense has been up to the challenge tonight. They really haven't, other than the one first down play and the penalty, they haven't allowed Menominee to get out of their own end zone. Menominee has not been able to run the ball whatsoever tonight. They'll take it around the left side. That's Once again, <laughs> the Raider defense wraps them up, pulls them down. Derek Burgess and company in there. And this is a game where the, 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 the players have to make plays, the big players, your Alex Burgesses, you know, the uh, Jared Johnsons, the uh, Ethan Stanchecks, the Iversons. Those are the kids that need to step up on defense and make the plays. Dan Kelly also in there in the tackle coming in from the safety position. He's another one. What a season he's had. The, one of the Kelly brothers, one of the captains. Both having outstanding seasons. Paulson under center, two receivers to his left, and Paulson looking to throw. Under pressure, 
eludes it, and then he's going down. down. There's Stanchik and company. The whole crowd pulls him down. It's going to be a loss of six or seven yards. You know, Paulson's been running for his life tonight. And if you notice on that play, when he got in trouble, the defensive backs did not give away the receiver. And that's something we saw I'm what sure happened been, last week. They've been coached up on. <laughs> you keep covering them until the whistle blows, boys. Yep. And because he he was he got he got a spot where he could have thrown it, nobody was open, so he hung onto the ball, tried to run it, and big loss. Third down and fifteen here coming up for Menominee. Paulson under center. Paulson looking to throw. Gets slid out of the pockets. Now he's looking, and now he's going down and once again. They only had one receiver out in a pattern on that play. One receiver. Paulson's finding himself with nowhere to go. That was one of the things we talked about this week when we talked. It was all going to be on this pass rush, and so far the pass rush of the Raiders have showed up. I do not understand that. They only had one receiver out. He could have had all the time in the world he would have nowhere to throw it, unless it was not, not going to be a... A, a pass where it's going to be a screen or something. But this could be a turning point in the game right here, Chris. Dan Kelly standing on the 50-yard line to receive this punt. Oh, Again, not, not the best kick. Gets it away from Kelly, but it's going to bounce out of bounds, and it should be marked at around the 50-yard line. That's where it is. The Raiders will take over here at the midfield strike. And this can be one of those spots, Joel, where if the Raiders can finish this drive, uh, you're not going to say it's going to wrap it up. This Menominee no, team's no, a quick strike team, but... If you can get, you know, 14 points ahead of them, it's going to change the complexion of this game. And this could be the, the turning point. Like I, I was trying to say that this is, you know, this is that point where they go down here and get 14 points up. Um, it's what they need. Holmes in the pistol. One receiver to the left, one to the right. And they will give it to Kelly around the left side. And Kelly gets cut down right around the line of scrimmage. A little indecision by Kelly there. He should have just kept going to the outside and tried getting around the outside. He tried to slow down a little bit, look for the cutback lane. It wasn't there, and he ended up with no gain. And yeah, these Raiders, or these uh, Mustang linebackers, are really sliding with the play pretty well. There's not a lot of big holes on the slow developing plays. Uh oh lost. Ball comes loose. I oh, believe we got a flag. Menominee We've got a flag. has it. We've got a flag down. Second time tonight. The, be. the ra third time tonight. The well, Raiders he's pointing, the he's, he's pointing at Hudson. I don't understand that. Third time well, tonight. We've seen the ball on the carpet for the Raiders. It's going to be on. How, how can it be a block in the back when it was a fumble? The, the ball was. No. Well, it, they'll more than likely, I would say, would decline the penalty. And make, it, make it third down. Make it, make it third down. Are they going to? Yeah, Menominee's going to decline this penalty, and they will. Sets up a third down and 15 now for Hudson. Well, and you know, just we just thought we just started getting a good feeling about this game, and I'll hear Hudson's shot themselves in the foot and looking at third and long. Holmes will go from under center. They'll send Fry in motion, give it to Lotney around the left side. He almost lost the football. Got about three yards, but that will send the Raider punt team onto the field, and Menominee's able to dodge a bullet there. Boy, just when you thought Hudson had something going. Raiders have put the ball on the carpet three times tonight. Been able to recover two of them, but both those times have really stalled out a nice-looking drive. Yeah, and it's just, you know, this one, you know, the drive never really got started. You know, great field position. Again, wasted by the Raiders. So Holmes set the punt here for Hudson, looking at fourth and 12 at the 49. And Holmes sends it down the field. Going to be picked up at the 18-yard line and brought down immediately. They'll mark it at the 19. Oh, and Menominee back onto the field here with 7:33 left in the second quarter. Like this, the, the official on this side marked the ball really at the 19, looked out and moved, took a step upfield and then marked it at the 20. I saw it. I, I'm at a loss. I think sometimes I, I hear you say that, Joel, and I look at you and go, eh. But, but that, that did happen right there. I mean, you know, yeah, it's maybe only a yard or a foot here or there, but you know what? It adds up. 
Now, now Hudson has to beware of the big play here. This can't allow Menominee to get their get a foothold. Balson will pitch it around the right side. No, no way to go. Room at That's all. gonna be a big loss for Menominee. They'll whistle it dead. It's gonna be a loss of five yards. So well, maybe seven points is all we'll need. <laughs> Second and 15 here coming up for the Mustangs. Clock ticking at 7.03 in the second quarter. And obviously a passing down. And they will throw it out in the flat. Well, we got to a, the we left got a flag. Side. Yeah, Menominee took off a little early there. That Three that's receivers gonna, that's gonna moved move well before the ball was snapped. That's going to come back. But that's a short passing game, and that was one of the things that we thought the Raiders could be susceptible to tonight. Okay, two so or three guys from the Menominee, two or three of those receivers moved before the ball was snapped there. So let me make a second and 20. And you're right, Chris, we did talk about that. It's that short passing game, Menominee. What's Hudson going to be able to do? Both of the plays that Menominee has been able to get first down yardage from have been on short passes tonight. And that's one thing Hudson's done such a good job in all seasons is mitigating those passes to being three, four-yard games. They'll set up three receivers on the left once again. Paulson looking to throw over there. Gets and it again. out there, same exact play. And the receiver able to shake a defender before they pull him down. He's going to pick up about 10 yards. Goes out to Cody Larson, senior receiver, six foot, 175 pounds. And you know, a little bit of that is, you know, the, the Raiders are playing a little softer than they normally would probably with it being, you know, deep in the Menominee territory and with a long down and distance. But still, uh, you know, third, was, there was no one within seven yards of him when he caught that ball. Third and ten here. He's going to do Paulson. it to the other side now. Still looking around. Yeah! Ball comes Get loose. It! Oh! Raiders. I think Can't that get was to a, it, but they said it was oh, a fumble. They said it was a fumble? Oh, I thought that was going to be a pass. He's marking it down right there. So if the Raiders would have been able to get that football, it would have been theirs. And, and, you know, that was a nice job by the secondary. They're given, not having to allow anybody open, allowing that pass rush to get to him because he had a lot of time back there in the pocket to throw that ball. Paulson has taken a lot of shots tonight. you got to think he's hearing footsteps in the back of his ears right now. And Menominee will punt well, from their end zone here. Line of scrimmage at the 12-yard line. Another low kick. Oh, this is a bad kick. There. And that's going to be out of bounds. Oh. They'll mark it at the 36-yard line, we're going to say. And, you know, Hudson's going to have to start taking some advantage of some of these field positions. They've got to start getting the ball in the end zone. The defense has given the Raider offense plenty of opportunities tonight. We've had some great field position and Unfortunately, just haven't been able to capitalize on it. They had three fumbles, lost one of them. Let's see what the Raider offense can do here. Holmes and company starting at the 36. Send Kelly in motion. And they'll send him back. They'll send Fry in motion, and now they'll give it to Lotney. Lotney's going to fight for two or three yards. They'll give him three. Second and seven here coming up for the Raiders. Clock ticking at 5.39 left in the second quarter. I think this is the uh, series here where the Raiders just need to pound the ball on the ground, get it into the end zone. And Holmes oh, looking man. to throw. Run it. He's Run it. Doing. He's thinking about it. And now there's now going to be a hold. There's a flag was thrown. Oh. So that will back the Raiders up. Come you, on. You just can't ask your offensive line to, to block that long. You got to be kidding me. So that's going to turn a third down and seven into a Second and 17, I believe. We'll see what oh. Coach Labuda wants to do. I'm, yeah, he's going to back him up. And, you know, we've talked about it all season, Chris. When Hudson tries to do things that, they're, that they haven't done with success all season, they get themselves in trouble. They've been running the ball with some success tonight. Why are you trying to throw it? And Holmes had a perfect opportunity there to tuck the ball and run, and he didn't. 
He let the defense catch up to him and you got to stay in character. And now you're in a position now where you got to throw the ball. Second 18 coming up for the Raiders. Send Kelly in motion and Holmes will keep it himself around there the left go. side. Holmes is going to pick right, up about right. nine, maybe 10 yards. Call it a gain of nine and they'll set up a third down and nine. And again, if they can pick up five or six here, they're going to go for it on fourth down. Yeah, we've talked about this before. Even if you don't, I mean, why would you not go for it? You're going to try to, you're going to punt it into the end zone and give it the ball, the ball in the 20. You're going to gain 10 yards. Maybe they'll just pick it all up here. Third and nine for the Raiders. And they'll give it to Kelly. Kelly on the misdirection. He's going to get Kelly's it. He's going to be first real down. Close. Should be a first down for the Raiders. And where nice. they're going to mark it, they will have a first down. So the Raiders able to overcome that penalty. That was a nice run by Kelly there. Reached out with the ball. So that will move the chains and set up a first and 10 for the Raiders at the Menominee 25-yard line. And those can be drive killers. Those holding calls are normally drive killers no matter what team you are. Hutz is lucky to overcome that. 4.30 left in the half. Holmes gives it to Lotney. Lotney fighting for yardage. Lotney's going to pick up three or four because he just wouldn't go down. And that's the difference between Lotney and most of the other running backs that Hudson has is he falls forward. And then we got a timeout. Three yards, and Menominee will call a timeout, and why not? And Well, that may be a result of Hudson's no huddle. You know, Labuda wants to take a timeout here, say, hey, guys, we got to hold him out of the end zone here. Yeah, it's not a bad spot to take one here at 414. You give your defense a little chance to rest, and it also kind of sets you up to maybe get the ball back with an opportunity to score uh, if Hudson's able to get this into the end zone. Well, let's hope Hudson can use up four minutes and 13 seconds to score so they don't have to, not going to give him any time. Not a bad spot at all to take a time out there. Can't can take them back to the locker room. You They're no nope. good in the second half. Yep, they're very perishable. So what do you think so far, Joel? This is uh, a nail biter. I'm uh, <laughs> I got that knot still in the pit of my stomach. I'm, I'm I'm not used to these Raider games being close. This season we've been very fortunate to have um, fortunate. Usually by this time of the game we've got it well in hand. We're yeah. talking about a running clock. I, I think we knew coming in tonight that whenever we play these guys, it's going to be a good football game. Holmes in the shotgun. And Holmes will fake the handoff, and now he's trying to throw. Takes a shot downfield. Yo, oh, he's out of bounds. He caught oh. it, fell out of bounds, and it will be an incomplete pass. And again, I do not understand that. You've been running the ball fairly effectively. Why are you changing the personality of your football team for this game? I think maybe Coach Cowles looked at it and said, hey, it's – We'll have two downs to get the first down. Let's take a shot here. But well, you know, and again, it stops the clock. So again, you're playing into Labuda, taking the time out, want to stop the clock. Yep. Why not run it and get the first down without any kind of histrionics? They'll give it to Lockney, and Lockney's going to pick up two or three, and that's going to set up a fourth down in about and four. They, they can't kick a field goal from here. No. Nope. So fourth and four coming up here for the Raiders. 345 oh, and I just, left in this second quarter. I can't Holmes. disagree more with that call. The pass it, throw it into the end zone on that last, on that second down play. Holmes is going to set up in the shotgun. Holmes looking to throw again. Gets it out to the left side. He's got his man. That's, That's going to be a first down for the Raiders. Alex Herring. Pulled it in and then took up another four or five yards, and that's going to set the ball up on the 11-yard line. It'll give it first and 10 for the Raiders with an opportunity to get a first down there on the one-yard line. You know, Alex Herring was wide open that play. He'd driven the receiver back, then just stopped and turned around. Good route by Herring. Clock ticking, 320. Holmes give it to Lockney, and Lockney's going to get maybe a yard, maybe two, depending on the spot. And the, the, the linebackers and the defensive ends are crashing so hard. They'll give them about a yard and a half. Locking behind Holmes. And Holmes will keep Holmes. it. Holmes makes it. In the end zone. Holmes get in the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown. Yes. 
Holmes is a slippery cat down there. Made a couple guys miss and dove for the pylon and got it. Well, I had a little conversation with my son before the game. He said we need to have the three-headed monster. Lockney, Holmes, and Herring. Well, so far, two of the three have scored. Raiders get out to a 13 to nothing lead. There's 2.43 left in the second quarter. And Holmes is going to hold for Somerville. Kick is up and it is no good. What? Somerville has missed just one other extra point this season and misses one here. Second one of the season for Somerville. He's been very effective. Well, he, the one he missed, it was a, well, I guess he never kicked it. It was a botched snap, and then they ended up getting the two-point conversion on it early I, in the season. I think they missed one. They did miss one, yep. but then he had another one that he didn't. He never yep. got the kickoff. Okay. That would end up getting the two-point conversion on it. So Menominee will have an opportunity here. Plenty of time on the clock, two timeouts. <sighs> well, let's hope that uh, missed extra point does not come back to haunt this Raider team. You know, we've talked about this all the time, that how crucial those extra points are. So far, the Raider defense has just been dice, though, tonight. Yeah, <laughs> it is a pretty devastating defense so far. Menominee has really only had two successful plays on offense in and four or five possessions. And one of those was called back on a penalty. One of them was called know. back on a penalty. And the other one was aided by a Hudson penalty. So... But they have had some near misses. They've had a couple of opportunities where, you know, the receivers just dropped the ball, which, you know. And Somerville set to kick off for Hudson. Low Out of a kick. line drive kick, fielded at the 10-yard line. Football! The ball comes Raiders loose. got Raiders it! Yes! It. So the Raiders Raider able to ball. strip the ball, and that could be a huge momentum shifter if the Raiders are able to capitalize on that one. This is the best field position of the night. We've talked about special teams all season, how much better the special teams are in this group of players than on years past, and there's a perfect example of right there. Not only covering the kicks, but they've, they've, they've forced numerous fumbles on kickoffs. They've ran kicks back. Raiders offense with 2.36 to work with and the ball on the 21-yard line. They'll kick it out of the option. Plenty of room this time for Fry. Fry's going to bring it Still back. on his feet. Still on his feet. Oh, down, down to the, the one. End zone, driven down at the one-yard line. Fry would not go down. Nice run by Fry. You know, we've talked about that a lot. You know, Hudson uh, running back goes down and, and uh, uh, Blake next Amborn. Guy up. And the next guy up fills right in. Holmes with Lockney behind him. First down and goal from the one for Hudson. And the oh. Raiders get Menominee to jump. And That's a tough spot for a defensive if, line. If you're trying to do that, well, I mean, yeah, I guess it gets you a yard. But I got to believe you're going to give the ball to Lockney here. I mean, is, there's, is there anybody that thinks otherwise? I don't. Who do you think is going to get it? I give it to 44. <laughs> Raiders will come out in the goal line formation here. They'll give it to Lockney. Lockney hit on contact. Oh, got, got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Again, where they had the ball was a nice place for a quarterback sneak, but that would be one of those out-of-character things that we just haven't seen the Raiders do this season. So I'd, yeah. I say go with Lockney. Well, Blabuda's going to call another timeout here, it looks like. 1.42 left to play here in the second quarter. I'd give it to number 44 three times and see what he can do. If you can stop Mr. 44 three times, then you won, boys. <laughs> well, you know, considering he's put up 12 touchdowns in the last three games. He's got a nose for the end zone. He does have a nose, and a lot of times he makes it look easy. But that's a lot of that's going to do the offensive line. I mean, you know, Menominee's totally selling out on that run up the middle. If, if they would fake that and Holmes would be wide open and running around the end, no one's going to be able to beat him to the cone, to the, to the corner you, of the end zone. You may see that. 
but you should do it now instead of doing, trying to do it on third or fourth down. And all this crowd you see here in front of the camera, those are Hudson folks. Student section down there in blaze orange tonight. And there's got to be, I've got to say, there's three, 300 students here from Hudson. Nice Hudson crowd here this evening. The Raiders so far have done all their scoring in the Hudson side. There's, There's Holmes. Holmes, Holmes is going to be in the end zone. Touchdown, Raiders. There we go. There's that quarterback sneak you alluded to earlier. <laughs> Takes it. The lead to 19-0. To no, I'm, I'm over there. I going to kick it here and not go for two. Yeah, this isn't the time to go for two. No. Somerville will come back out to kick. Holmes to hold it. Kick is up. is up, and it's going to be good this time. The Raiders take a 20 to nothing lead, and that timeout that Coach Labuda called preserved about 30 seconds of clock. There's 138 left in this second quarter. Well, How many down to just one timeout, though? Maybe Hudson can uh, force another fumble on a kickoff. That'd be nice. And again, all season long, we've seen this Hudson Raiders special team squad just making plays both on the coverage team and on the return teams. Uh, they are a special unit. You know, we do talk about season about how Hudson doesn't play kids both ways. You know, either you play offense or defense. Special teams is the one area where you may start on offense or defense, and you will play special teams. Uh, we've seen Alex Burgess. We've seen uh, uh, both of the Kelly boys make some plays on, on special teams. Mike Holmes, uh, Miles Lewis. Raiders will gather up around the 35-yard line. Somerville puts the ball on the tee. This is kind of a stunned Menominee crowd here. I think everybody expected a very close football game here tonight. M Menominee has just been able to do nothing against the Raider defense this evening. Yeah, actually, coming in this game, if you look at the Associated Press poll, Menominee was actually ranked higher than Hudson. And that is in a big school poll. That's not per division. So that is head to head. They had Menominee ahead of the Raiders. They'll run it around the yeah! left side. Cut down. Special teams player of the year, <laughs> Mr. Dan Kelly. Dan Kelly. We just talked about it. Playing outstanding cornerback, and they're another great special teams player. He has not been named special teams player of the year, but I'm naming yeah. him a special teams player of the year. He has just been, had a nose for the football. You know, a lot of that is just being elusive enough not to get blocked on your way down there. And fast enough. Yes. He's, he, he's the first man to the, to the uh, opposing team every time. Here comes Paulson. And Paulson looking oh. to throw. He's got time this time. Gets it out there, and it's well short of the receiver. Kelly was looking, never even looked around. If Kelly would have looked around, he might have had a chance for that ball. Yeah, I think he would have been running down the sidelines, too, because there was nobody else and over I noticed, there. I think Bird just stopped his rush. It looked like he was going to have a shot at him at the quarterback, and he stopped his rush, maybe looking for a, a screen. Clock stopped at 128, and you got to think maybe the nominee's going to just take three shots here. They're going to have to do something, though. They well, may have to punt the ball away and give the Raiders some well, time. You yeah, you do that. You punt the ball away. You're going to give the Raiders the ball. And, and they'll run it this time up the middle, gain maybe about a yard. And that's probably the best run they've had tonight. Yeah, it looked like that was uh, Elliot Motu in there, which is noticeable. Elliot Motu backs up Benoit at the nose. Had a real solid season. He's a junior. He'll be back again next year. Clock ticking at 109, and now Menominee taking their time. You know, we've talked about all the kids for Hudson have had tackles this year and had multiple game tackles. You know, they just they rotate kids in so effectively on that defensive line. Paulson looking to throw. Paulson under pressure. Paulson going down. Well, <laughs> Paulson's been running for his life. So now does Hudson call a timeout? They should. They there do. There we go. Well, Dylan Magadans, and again, that was another one of those sacks where he just didn't quit. Now Hudson get the ball back with, in good field position with some time left. 42 seconds remaining in this second quarter, and Menominee's going to be punting from the edge of their own end zone. 
if Hudson can uh, do something with this ball here, they could have the, the ball certainly in Menominee territory. And Menominee has not done a real good job of punting the ball tonight. They've, a lot of their punts have been, you know, I know they're trying to angle them away from the return guys because Hudson has a reputation of being able to return these balls, but, you know, you're getting short kicks out of it. You're kicking them out of bounds 30 yards downfield. This, well, <laughs> you have to think that it'd be safe to maybe pursue the punter here. I don't think Menominee would try to fake something here, but no, just I when you think they're not going to do it, it's when they do it, I guess. I got to believe that uh, Hudson's not going to put on a, a, a block here. They don't want to take a chance on, you know, running into the kicker or something that would give Menominee the ball back. Kelly's standing at the Menominee it. 45. Kick is away. It's a high, high kick. kick. And Kelly will call for a fair catch. Get away from and it. He gets away from it. All right. Down at the 45 yard line. Okay, with 33 seconds. So 33 seconds for the Raiders here. Two timeouts remaining. See what they come up with. Leading this game 20 to nothing. And Joel, we are always we always like the aggression here, but this might be a spot where you just kind of say, hey, we'll go in the locker room up 20 to nothing and get the football back. So you don't want to take a chance on something really bad happening, like an interception return for a touchdown. I would not throw the ball here. I would just run it. If you break something, great. If not, going to the, like you said, going to the locker room with a 20-point 20, 20 lead. And the Raiders will run it with Holmes. Holmes gets cut <laughs> down after a gain of about a yard. <laughs> that was a and nice job by the linebacker on the far side. He was not fooled by the fake. Clock still running, and yeah, I, I don't think the Raiders think are just going to. I don't gonna, think the Raiders are even going to take a snap here. Yeah. Head into the locker room yeah. up twenty to nothing, and you're going to get the football first in the second half. Yeah, so there's no no sense in something letting something bad happen here. So that'll be it. Hudson crowd gives their squad a standing ovation as they head into the locker room with the three possession lead. Over the Menominee Mustangs and Joel, what do you think, man? I feel a lot better now than I did uh, one quarter of football ago, <laughs> but I think uh, it's going kind of as, as what I thought it was going to come down to special teams, come down to Hudson's defense, be a little pressure on their quarterback, which is, everything's happened. Hudson's ended up with a lot of short fields. They've kept Menominee with a long field for most of the night, and uh, everything's going Hudson's way. Yep. Great game here for the Raiders. And this is one of those games you talked about butterflies. That was one of the things I was concerned about. You know, this Raider football team has really had their way with everyone they've played all season. How are they going to react when they were challenged and maybe not picking up five, six yards each time they run the football? And uh, kind of had some shakiness early on, but looked pretty good here in the last few possessions. And my, my concern coming out of halftime is going to be, do these players feel like they have this game in, in the bag? Because this ain't over. No. Nope. Menominee, Menominee can put up some points. Menominee can put some points up in a hurry, and we should have a very exciting second half of football coming up. We're going to take a break for halftime. We'll see you in a moment. Welcome to the second half of football here at Don and Nona Williams Stadium. It's a game for the conference championship. Both teams come into this contest 7 to nothing, but the Hudson Raiders all over Menominee in the first half, leading it 20 to nothing. But we do hear, have some bad news from the Hudson sideline. Joel, can you give us an update? Well, there's a rumor at halftime that uh, Dan Lockney, Hudson's running back, is uh, out for the rest of the game. Uh, he appeared to have suffered what, what they're calling a concussion uh, there at the towards the end of the first half, and he will not be back, I'm told. But... Is that a little cat and mouse? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think Hudson plays that game. But uh, Hudson has a very capable stable of backs that they'll have to fill in. And, you know, with the lead they have, as long as we just don't turn the ball over and keep just doing what they've been doing, we'll be fine. Yeah, it looked like Lochte took quite a shot down there in the goal line. But as Joel said, uh, the fullback position has been a spot that these Raiders have been very stocked at this season. Austin Koski's look good. Wade Malika's look good. And uh, Alex Paulson's. We've got four four guys deep in that position. And all four of those guys with uh, those three and, and Lockney have had some major success this season. It'll be interesting to see who Coach Cowles goes with. But uh, I feel like we're in capable hands, and I agree with you. If we don't turn the ball over, we'll be just fine. And who knows? Maybe we'll just run this one back for touch and Let's be up we, by 27. We, we don't have to worry about the offense. Mike Holmes has done it before, as has uh, Mr. Dan Kelly. So we've got two guys capable of taking it the distance. And you've got uh, 
Uh, Miles Lewis back there too, who's had some nice returns in the punt game. So, and you got Joe Kelly over there on the other side, short man. So there's a lot of guys back that can do some good things with the ball. Joe Kelly, you're right. I get those Kelly brothers confused once in a while. Dan Kelly receives, receives the punt. Joe Kelly on the kick return team. Well, they're both Kellys are out there. Well, fine. <laughs> <laughs> so we got the ball out there. This one's gonna be going up, going up out of. Oh, maybe that's yeah, Kelly. Fielded by Joe Kelly, and oh. Joe Kelly makes a guy miss. He's got some room. Makes another guy miss. Surveying the field, and still on his feet, finally taken down at the 32-yard line, but that was a spot. Menominee should have had him behind the 20. And I think that was kind of a poor decision there. I mean, that ball was kicked perfectly to the sideline. He ran it all the way back to the middle of the field rather than just taking it up the sideline, where he probably would have ended up about the same spot he, he was, but. Had to work a little harder had to for work it. a little harder for those 20 <laughs> yards. Raiders will set up shop on the 31. But I don't know, it looks like Lockney's back in there to me. 32 yard line, and Dan Lockney is. So it looks like we might have had some bad information there at the half. The rumor kind of spread through this, this crowd here. Yeah, but Dan Lockney in there. Dan Lockney carrying the football. Dan Lockney still <laughs> on his feet. First down, Dan Lockney. Well, well, that's good to see. I'm really glad that was some misinformation. Maybe so much for that rumor. Maybe that's somebody else they put in number 44's jersey. <laughs> Doesn't matter who you put in Superman's suit. <laughs> yep. If he's not Superman, he can't fly. Yep, that's true. Holmes under center. They'll send Kelly in motion, give it to Lockney. Lockney's going to pick up uh, maybe a yard or two before he's pushed back behind the line of scrimmage. They're going to give him a yard. And this Menominee team is fired up on the sidelines. Well, they got to make something happen here. If the Raiders are able to move this ball down the field, it's not quite lights out, but you're reaching for the switch. Yeah, you know, you get up 27 points. That's, a, you know, when you haven't scored a point all game, you expect to put up Lockney again. And Lockney's going to pick up about four, <laughs> and he just refuses to go down. <laughs> Looks like he... he he didn't, he didn't, must, must not have been uh, what we thought. He looks like he's running the ball pretty effectively. <laughs> <laughs> so third down and three here yes, coming up for to, Hudson. I'm going to have to vet my sources a little better here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hudson tries to draw him off sides. Doesn't work. Mike Holmes go back to reset the troops. Holmes will now set up in the shotgun. Couldn't get him to jump. See what they do here. They run a man in motion. And once again, the ball hits the turf. The Raiders just have had a hard time for some reason tonight with the handoff. That's the fourth, fourth time tonight we put the ball in the turf. We lost two of them. And that's just, you know, that's what we talked about. You can't do that. You can't turn the ball over against good teams. Second turnover for the evening for Hudson. This is three straight games where they've had two turnovers. And this is just what Menominee needed. And this is, I think, I believe this is Menominee's best starting position other than their other turnover. See what they do with it. They'll hand it off up the middle, and they're going to get some positive yards there, pick up probably about three or four there in first down. That's been their best first down play so far tonight. I guess. First time they've had positive yards on first down. Give them a gain of four, and it'll set up second down and six with 9.50 left in the third quarter. And, you know, realistically, I think Menominee has to come away from this drive with a touchdown. Paulson under center, and they will hand it off again. Once again. Nothing and happening there. Burgess and company just stifles the play. So they have a loss of one on the play. Going to be a loss of one, and that's going to set up a third down and six at around the 48-yard line of Menominee. And I got to believe if Menominee come, up, come away with a good play here, they're going to go for a fourth down. I mean, they're getting to. I mean, yeah, it's still early in the half, but they got to put up some points up. They got to score some touchdowns. Paulson will set up this time in the shotgun. Three receivers to his left. And looking to throw it over his left. Throws it up Wide the open. And he's got his man. It's going to be a touchdown is. for the Mustangs. Well, that will breathe some life into this Menominee crowd and the Menominee team. 
Touchdown goes to Cody Larson, and it's a 52-yard touchdown from Paulson to Larson, and they didn't gain 52 yards in the first half. Yeah, that was the big play. We talked about the big plays, and there Hudson gives one up early in this half. This game is not over. Hudson's going to need to put some more points on the board. We talked right before the half started. The one thing that the Raiders couldn't do is turn it over, and they did it on the first drive, and Menominee made them pay. Yep. Mustangs with a little bit of confusion on special teams again. And they got they a flag. The kick away. Raiders put some pressure on the Mustangs. We'll see who the penalty is against. We'll be oh, against the Raiders, the Raiders, so that's going to get declined. Unless Menominee decides to take the points off the clock. Points off the board. Well, did he, was it? I don't think there was no play. He whistled it before the play was, okay. before, the, before the kick was made, so it's going to, no. They'll kick it again. Raiders had some pressure. Kind of, kind of an insignificant penalty. Well, uh, again, Hudson's offside. Moved again. No flags on the field, though. Wow. Looks like Hudson again jumped. So the kick is good, and that will cut the lead to 13 points. Menominee makes it 20 to 7. They score uh, with 8.58 remaining in the third quarter. And a long strike, Paulson to Larson. And, you know, there's that big play. The last time they had that a play similar to that in the first half that the receiver dropped, there hung on to it and it ended up being a touchdown. And Hudson's got to clear that up if they're going to go anywhere this postseason. And that was one of the times, really one of the very few times tonight we've seen Paulson had some time to throw. Set back, looked real comfortable in the pocket and fired a nice pass. Paulson's got quite an arm. He's... Even the passes that have gone incomplete have looked pretty good, especially when he's got a, got an opportunity to throw. And that was an opportunity there for the Raiders. They had the ball in good field position. If they could have gone down and scored there, you know, that might have taken the life right out of this Menominee team. But now, you know, you just gave them a, a new breath of life. And this game's a long way from being over. Got it to a two-possession game. Menominee set the kick. Cole Bartz with the kick, and it's going to be Mike Holmes. Picking it up around the five-yard line. Holmes taking his time. Ooh. Holmes cut down. And let's see where they mark the football. Going to be around the 24-yard line. And, you know, really, Hudson's been their worst, their own worst enemy in this game tonight. You know, between the penalties, the turnovers, just that that's uncharacteristic what we've seen from Hudson this year. They've given Menominee the football twice at midfield off of turnovers. See what Hudson can do here. They set up two receivers to the left side, actually to Holmes' right. Holmes in the pistol. And Holmes is going to run it, and he's not going to get much. Give him a gain of about one or two. Well, the crowd seems to be more fired up now. A little life into the crowd. They're all kind of sitting on their hands for that first half, and now... Defense getting excited, feeling like they're getting back in it. The Raiders need at least to get a few first downs they, here. They need to prolong this drive here. That's very key right here. Clock ticking, 825. And Holmes will pitch it out once again. Ball hits the floor, and Fry picks it up, but it's going to be a big loss. And they have really had a hard time with that tonight. And we haven't seen that this season. But uh, they have had a real struggle on the option and just kicking it out on those little short pitch, those little flip pitches. You know, you know, we talked about this, Hudson, you know, coming out of the halftime, being maybe a little flat, maybe if you look at plays, I think they have this game in the bag, and it's a long way from that. Third and 13. And they hand it off. And they're not going to get much, if anything. That. That's going to send the Raider punt team onto the field. So things really went the Raiders' way to cap off that second quarter, but to start the third quarter, it's pretty much been disaster city and, for Hudson. And once again, Menominee's going to get the ball in decent field position. They could, they could get the ball close to midfield. And again, you give this Menominee team, you give them short fields, you give them opportunities, that they're going to get back in this game. Punt returner right now standing at around the own, their own 35-yard line. Holmes set the kick. Gets the kick away. It's a line driver. And the Raiders will have an opportunity to cover it up, but it's going right to be at the 45 yard line. Terrible kick. Okay. So 
Menominee well, once again with great field position here, and if they can get a score, it makes it a one possession game. You know, again, here we have this Hudson defense here asked to step up. They've been asked to do it all season, and they've responded. You know, the other team gets a score. Up to this point, Hudson's always been able to respond in like kind of right away. There they didn't. Now the defense is back out there trying to protect this 13 point lead. Well over half of the third quarter to go, so we have plenty of time. Seven minutes left in the third quarter. 19 minutes left in the regular season for both teams. Paulson looking to throw. Paulson got room across Wide the middle. Wide again! Wide open is Larson. Larson's got a block. Larson makes a man miss. Larson down inside the 20 to the 15 the yard line. the same play! Paulson, or Larson was really all alone out there. And Not No one was within 10 yards of him. And where's the pressure? Why? Menominee had four wideouts, and they can't get pressure on the quarterback? Ball placed at the 11-yard line of Hudson. Menominee will spread it out again. Paulson looking to throw. Paulson with Holding! Time. Come on! Paulson throwing into the end zone, and it's incomplete. That was, come on, ref, you've got to call that. Caught, but out of bounds by Luke Stanley. Second and 10 coming up from Menominee. Boy, that was right in front of the referee too. How does he not call that? Menominee sends two wide to the right, two to the left, one man in the backfield. Well, Hudson needs to communicate, who's picking Paulson. up? Paulson with time, Paulson throwing it into the end zone and it's caught for, no, oh, the ball comes out Could of not there. hang on to it. Larson had it in his hands, but when he hit the turf, the ball came loose and that will bring up a third down and 10 here. Well, this is definitely four down territory. I don't have any doubt that Manami's gonna go for a fourth down. So they got two downs to get, well, they can get a first down. So, but I think the odds of them getting a first down without getting it into the end zone are pretty slim. Well, the way they've had success, I would throw it to him again. Spread it he's out. He's gonna. He's, he's looking that way. He's throwing it into the end zone. It's gonna be incomplete. Sets yeah. up a fourth down, and this is a biggie. Well, yep, they're they don't not, look like not they're sending a kicking team in, so we're gonna have a fourth down coming up here. Well, I gotta believe he's gotta believe. Call a timeout. I gotta believe with the way Menominee's defense has been playing in the second half, Labuda's gotta feel pretty good. If he doesn't get it, he's gonna be able to hold Hudson and get the ball back on a short field again. Menominee will call a timeout to talk about it. <laughs> the kicker came onto the field, looked like he was waving the kicking team on and then said, nope, we're staying here, boys. So this is going to be a very big play here to start this third quarter. That fumble on the 45-yard line in the first possession of the Raiders probably stands as the biggest play so far in the second half of football. And this is going to be the second biggest play. Well, and the two long passes to number one that uh, name escapes right now. but Indeed. The uh, same guy, same play. One time he got in the end zone, once he didn't. I mean, that, uh, you know, it looks like Menominee this half. They just decided they're going to come out. We're going to come out and throw the ball. You know, if we're going to wide up for Fourth down and 10. Paulson in the shotgun. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. One man in the backfield. Oh, and Hudson jumped. Oh. The Raiders are pointing towards the Mustangs, but we'll see what the guys in the stripes say. Really, uh, Paulson kind of. Oh, and the Hudson yeah. Raiders are clapping. Yeah, Paulson All really right. moved there. He kind of did a little shoulder juke, and I think that's what drew the Raider defense. Honestly, I'm not sure if that really hurts Menominee, though. It does open up some space for him. Gives him a little more. I was just going to say that, you know, that short field that it kind of plays into Hudson's hands a little bit with the passing game because it gives them less field to cover. So that will open up the field a little bit here for Menominee. Again, Paulson looking to throw under big pressure. Paulson's yes, down go he goes. Fourth down. 
Huge play for that Raider defense. And again, Joel, we talked about coming up big when they needed to, and they did that and time. There was some pressure there. They finally got some pressure on Paulson. And they actually looked like the ball came loose. It did. That helped them out a little bit because they gained a couple of yards on it. Number 44 for the Mustangs was able to jump on it. That ball did come out of there. It's Dylan Harmston recovered the fumble for the Mustangs, but on fourth down, the Raiders will take over on downs. Well, you know, Hudson was a little slow starting offense in the first half here. Maybe uh, this is where they're going to get that offense going. And they will hand it off. There to we go, Lockney. big hole. Dan Lockney, plenty of room. Dan Lockney still on his feet, rounded the corner down to the 36-yard line. That will move the chains. First down, Hudson. Ooh, Lockney's limping a little bit there. He did have a, a toe issue earlier in the season. He kind of got tackled from behind. The defender came down on his calves. And looks like Austin Koski will enter the game, the senior for the Hudson Raiders. So Koski will come into the game for Hudson, senior fullback. And Koski's done a great job this year running the ball between him and Malika. Obviously, the drop off in size. And they'll give it to Koski. Koski still, on his, still on his feet and battling for extra yards. Pickup of about three they're going to give him. Had him stop for no gain, but these guys keep moving their legs. They don't go down. They'll give him four, second six coming up for Hudson. This is the kind of drive that we need from Hudson. We need him just to keep the ball on the ground, grind it out, use up some clock. And they'll give it to Kelly. Nothing Kelly happening there. wrapped up and pulled down. He might lose a yard there. I think they're going to give him a short loss on that one. It's going to bring up a third down and around six yards coming up here for the Raiders, a long six. And, you know, for that play to work, that inside reverse like that, they have, the offensive line has to do a little better job of blocking those linebackers. So third and six here for Hudson. Here we go, D. Holmes in the pistol. Austin Koski behind him. We'll send Kelly in motion. Holmes will keep it. Holmes cuts He's it out. First down and first more. Down and more. On his feet, down the sideline, and cut down at the 33-yard line. First down for the Raiders in Menominee territory. Huge play by Mike Holmes there. Huge play. That's just what the Raiders needed. They got that ball back in Menominee territory. Dan Lochte just come back into the game for the Raiders as well. One of the Menominee players had to come off the field, lost his helmet. So once again, we saw that rule come play where he has to come off the field for a play. Holmes with Lockney back behind him. Fry to his left and Kelly to his right. They'll give it to, actually they'll kick it out. And it's Fry. Fry down to the 26 yard line. It's going to be a pickup of around seven yards. So the Raiders with a second and short here coming up. Second down and two. Let's just keep this clock running. Grind it out, get the ball in the end zone. Clock ticking at 426. Raiders leading at 20 to 7 over Menominee. We'll send Kelly in motion, give it to Lockney around the left side. Lockney will have the first down and more. Moving the chains are the Raiders. Again, this football game tonight for the Big Rivers Conference crown. Both these teams come into this game 6 0 in the conference, 7 0 overall. And we've got whistles. Timeout. What do we have we've here? We've got an official's timeout. I don't Looks understand like they're talking about the clock. Saying four something, putting time back Looks on like the clock. Looks like they need to put some time back on the clock. In the clock didn't stop on the first down. That's it's the clock must have kept running in high school football on a first down. The clock stops as the chains are moved. And then once the chains are spotted, they start the clock again. So how much interval was there? Well, they're not. Well, they didn't put any time on the clock. There, the other day, the other oh, there it is. 18. 418 now remaining. It. And they wind the clock. Holmes under center, first down and 10 on the Menominee 20-yard line. 
Jackson. Kelly in motion, give it to Lockney once again. Inside Lockney, the five. First down and goal coming up for the Raiders. Lockney inside the five down to the four-yard line, and the Raiders with an opportunity to stretch out their lead. First and goal at the four for Hudson. Herrick wide to the right. And they'll give it to Lockney. Lockney <laughs> absorbs the hit, falls forward. He's going to be down to around the two-yard line. You know, we've talked about that all season. Lockney's best advantage to his running is that he f always falls forward. Stop for one, falls forward, makes it three. Second down and goal from the two for Hudson. Holmes under center. Holmes will give it to Lockney. Lockney. Again, fighting for yard, just going to be down to around the one-yard line. So you were to spot it. They were to spot it about the one-and-a-half-yard line. This is, again, going to be one of those spots where we're either going to get stopped or we're going to get in the end zone. There will be no field goals kicked here. Holmes is going to set up this time in the pistol. We'll send Kelly in motion. Holmes kicks it to There's Kelly. Kelly's going to be in the end zone. Untouched. Touchdown, Raiders. Stretches the lead to 26-7. to Sam Somerville comes on to the field to add the extra point. That was a huge drive for the Raiders there, Chris, because that was really, you know, they looked a little flat. You know, Menominee was getting some momentum. They got the touchdown, got the ball back, almost got it in the end zone. You know, turned it over on fourth down at the 10-yard line or 20-yard line, and that was really what Hudson needed right there. And the snap is down. Kick is up, and it is good. It's a 27-7 lead with 2.50 left in the third quarter. And another thing about that drive, Joel, every single play was a run. The clock was ticking as they moved their way down the field. And that's, you know, that, and that's what the Raiders have been so successful at all year. You're running out the clock. Run, run, run. So Menominee, their last two possessions have been able to break two big pass plays on each possession, and I'm pretty sure we're going to see some passing coming up here in this next possession as Menominee's going to be looking to stay in this football game. You know, that's key. Hudson's going to have to get the pressure on the quarterback, get and try to get a pick, try to get one of these turnovers back. And we've, seen, we've seen Hudson do it before. They, they intercepted the ball and ran it back for a touchdown before. Let's do it again. You send those front four to work, and you tell the rest of the seven guys to stay with their men. As the front four have done just fine tonight. Everybody does their job, we'll be just fine. And that touchdown, that drive definitely uh, quieted down the Menominee crowd. They are cheering. Uh, James Ga Jim Gates just showed up. He's actually in a wheelchair. He's here trying to urge on his teammates. Get you a picture of him in just a second. Somerville to kick. Somerville high kick. Little short's going to get fielded around the 19 yard line. He'll try to move it around. He's going to get to around the 25. Right there, Kelly again. <laughs> Here's James Gates in the wheelchair. Broke his ankle last week against Superior and really with the heart and soul of the Menominee defense and their second leading receiver at tight end. Well, so try to give this Menominee team a little bit of a boost. The Menominee's going to come out right away in a no huddle, trying to catch the Raiders off guard. Paulson looking to throw. Paulson deep, looking for his guy, and just overshot his man. him. Yeah, and then this, the receiver had a half a step on the defensive back. Paulson looking for Bergstrom, had him, but overshot him. A lot of speed on this Menominee football team. And again, Menominee's just going to be satisfied to line it up and line it up and throw it. Wing it down the field. Paulson set the pass. Paulson under pressure. Paulson yes! Going down. Ethan Stanchek blitzing in from the left side linebacker position. I remember Seth Stanchek a few years ago with a huge sack to end a game here. 
to uh, ice a victory for the Hudson Raiders. He was a beast. Ethan's Alex Burgess reminds me a lot of Seth Stanchuk. Playing that defensive end position. Clock ticking, 207. Third down and 13 for Menominee. Three receivers to the right. And once again, Paulson running. Paulson throwing it up there. Oh! Nearly intercepted. The ball went through the hands. I believe that was, was Kelly out there. I think it was Iverson. Number two? Or was it eight? That was 17. Oh, was it 17? <laughs> <laughs> I, my eyes, I can't see what's right in front of me, let alone something that far across the field. So that will bring up fourth down for Menominee, and they will send the punt team onto the field. And here we go. This is, again, this turning point in the half where this, if Hudson can get the ball back, get some good field position, and go down. If they score again, this game, I got to believe, is out of reach. Kelly standing at the 45-yard line of Hudson. And the Raiders came for it that time. Kelly's going to take a step back, and he's going to have oh, to move away he from Oh, he should have grabbed that. Yeah, he's not happy with himself. That one's going to roll down dead all the way down to the 26-yard line. Huge punt. Should have stuck that arm up there and called for a fair catch, yeah, and he knew it right you away. Know, he's been doing a good job that all season by, you know, with those fair catches. But that just means it's a longer drive. Hudson gives up more of the clock. <laughs> Glass has full. Mr. Joel Eby. 142 left in this third quarter. Hudson Raiders leading at 27 to 7. And as Joel said, if they can put together a drive here, it's over. And you know that the size of Hudson's offensive line could be starting to take its toll on the Menominee defense. And they will give it to Lockney. Lockney is going to get about two. Should bring up a second and eight for Hudson. Holmes very will work from the shotgun here. And Raiders taking their time working the clock here. Very quiet crowd on both sides. Holmes taking his time. And he's going to keep it himself. And he's going to pick up. He should he have the first, the first down. down. Yep, he's got it. That will move well, the chains once again for the Raiders. And they, get, and they move it back two yards. Raiders right up to the line of scrimmage here this, this time. I'd like to see them just get there and snap at once. Call two plays. Let Holmes get there to stay because Menominee's not ready. Clock ticking. 53 seconds left in the third quarter. And once again, Holmes surveys the defense. And he'll snap it here. And they're going to fake it to Lockney. He's going to kick it out to Kelly. Kelly's got the edge. Kelly makes a man miss. And he's over the 50 down to the 46-yard line. First down, Hudson Raiders. And that, you know, some of the runs that Mike Holmes has had by keeping the ball, that's what sets that up. That defender has to commit to Holmes. It leaves that running back open, and the, the key to that is the wide receiver making a block on the cornerback. And these Raiders receivers have done a nice job of blocking all season. If you don't block out there, <laughs> you probably get pretty bored. So, Yeah, they're not getting a lot of balls thrown their way. No, nope. clock ticking at 25. The Raiders will hand it off. They'll go up the middle. And that looked like Malika, or is that's that? Koski, I believe. 37? Yeah, that's Koski. Koski picks up about two, three yards there on first down. And I believe that's going to be the end of the third quarter. Yep. And six seconds remaining, and the Hudson Raiders will call it a quarter. And once again, this Raider crowd comes to their feet. Hudson trades some blows with Hudson or with Menominee there. Both teams score a touchdown apiece, and entering the fourth quarter, that 20-point lead remains. And I'm feeling better about it. I'm feeling better about it. <laughs> you, you were getting you nervous. Know, I, I, I know I when would, you're nervous when you start yelling a yeah, lot, Joel. I, I, was, uh, <laughs> I, I get excited. I'll, I'll, I'll admit it, I am a homer. I don't like when things go amiss. Yeah. And I felt a little bit slipping away there in the first part of the third quarter. Yeah, Menominee really grabbed uh, quite a bit of momentum there. And that sack on fourth down just shifted the game. And then the ensuing drive where the Raiders took the ball the length of the field for the touchdown. And you know, that's one thing I don't think we've talked about enough this year is the resilience of this Raider team. Every time that they've faced a little bit of adversity, and it hasn't been a lot. No. Nope. <laughs> but every time they have, they've got right back in it. 
It was 7-7 seven to seven last week before uh, the Raiders put up 35 unanswered. And uh, another stat that I saw, <laughs> Hudson Raiders gave up just 89 yards of offense to River Falls last week. Holmes in the shotgun, second down and six. They'll send Fry in motion. Holmes is going to keep it, but things were kind of jammed up yeah, there. That didn't look good. That, that play didn't look good from the start, but that's going to bring up third and long for the Raiders. Third and looks like, what, seven? Six or seven coming up here. Yeah, that play, just the spacing wasn't right on it. And I almost would believe here that if the Raiders do not get a good percentage of this yardage, they will punt it and try to pin Menominee deep. Third they, haven't down done it, they haven't done it all season, but third and seven for Hudson. They'll run the option. Holmes, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> they really had him stop for a loss. He turned it into a three-yard gain, and Coach oh. Cowles has got a decision to make. Looks uh, like he's sending the punt team onto the field. Now, this is one of those points where you need to angle it towards the sideline. So with a 20-point lead and 11 minutes left in the clock, Coach Cowles will send the punt team in. But once again, keep in mind, Mike Holmes is the punter. Kelly on the left side for Hudson. Two men deep for Menominee. And there's the fake. Holmes is going to take it around the right side. Holmes Ooh, is going to be, be short. I think he's short. He needed to get to the he needed to get to the 40. Boy, I don't know where the official's standing. It's going to be really close. He needed to get to the almost the 35. That, the Raiders got a pretty good spot on that play. We'll see if it's enough. <laughs> so we're going to get a measurement. This is going to be very close. I don't think he got it. I, I like the play, though. I like the call. Yep, nothing wrong with it. You might have it. They're going to stretch it. I think they've got it. The crowd here thinks they've got it. They're really investigating down there. Either you got it or you yes! got it. down, Hudson. Oh, sorry. <laughs> wow. I think he had to get the credit card out and try to slide Boy, that down along the I've never seen him inspect a football like that. They were looking at it. Had it by a dimple, I guess. Boy, I don't know. That, that, that was something else. He, he had that credit card out. Crowd doesn't like the spot of the football, but Hudson's been on the losing end of those spots all season, so we'll, we'll take one when we get one. 10.25 left clock ticking first and 10 for Hudson. They'll give it to Fry. Fry's got an opening. He's going to oh. get a, yeah, maybe a yard, though. And that's one of those spots we talked about Hudson all season long where you see an opening and the Hudson defense collapses on it. That time the Menominee defense, because Fry had a seam there, but the Menominee defense just closed it up well, in I a hurry. The def defender was on the ground. The linebacker, I think it was the defensive end there, number 45, just was on the ground, just reached up and grabbed a leg and nowhere to go. Holmes will kick it himself. Now he kicks it out to Kelly. Oh, Kelly. There's a block in the back. There's going to be a block in the back. Nowhere to go, and there's a flag They're down. They're going to have the, pulse or the wide receiver on this end for a block in the back, but. I don't know if that's a if that if they're in the box is that a block in the back? No. Well, yeah, they're gonna call it a block in the back. It was uh, it was definitely a block in the back. I mean, I saw it. It wasn't. That's, Will Menominee take a second that's, that's twenty or a third and nine? I take the I, penalty. I would take the penalty. They Ooh. wave it off. They're gonna decline it. You know, and, and I gotta believe here if Hudson get half this, they're gonna go for it on fourth down. I agree with you. Even the stick man was. No, I guess he's going to move back there. They'll take the loss. So they decline it. Third down and 12 coming up for the Raiders. And as you said, Joel, if, if Hudson can pick up six or seven here, they're going for it in fourth down. Dan Lockney behind Mike Holmes. Herring to the right, Peterson to the left. And Holmes set to throw. Holmes in trouble. Holmes stays on his feet, but he's going to go down at the 40. It's going to be a sack Another and a loss, loss of about two. Well, here comes the punt, punt team, it looks like. So all those measurements and all that excitement for not, but the Raiders able to tick off an extra minute off yeah, the clock it there. It did actually 
Clock still ticking. It should get about a minute and a half out yep. of it. That's one thing that almost this Hudson, you know, hurry up offense, the no huddle offense almost works against them in these situations. When you're trying to use up the clock, you know, you're running your offense and you want to keep it in that rhythm, but you, you also want to run out the clock. Menominee will just send one man deep this time. It's Larson. Doesn't look like they have a block on. And Holmes will kick it and away. That's going to go in the end zone. That's, oh, oh beautiful very good punt. kick. I stand corrected. <laughs> Inside the 10, down to the six-yard line. Can't ask for better than that. Wow. Mike Holmes puts <laughs> it down on the seven-yard line. The coffin kick. He's the Ray guy of high school football. So now if the Raiders can let those hounds loose, it could get real bad for Menominee if the Hudson Raiders can come up with a sack here. They'll mark it at the six-yard line. Yeah, it looks like Menominee is going to come right out and line it up right away. They're not, you know, they got the play call. Hudson's better be ready. I believe they're going to air it out. Yeah, it's a tight well, formation, gonna, but no. we've seen Menominee throw out of plenty of tight formations. Uh. And Paulson will hand it off to the right side. Nothing doing. Pulls him down, and he's going to get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. <laughs> Haven't really had a chance to talk about Dan Jakes. He's uh, the second leading rusher in the Big Rivers Conference and has gone nowhere tonight. Well, I mean, you know, Menominee's another team that they do spread the ball around a lot. You know, he is a, he's doing, is their main rusher, but. They've got a couple other guys, but neither one of them have had any success this evening. Paulson, three receivers to his left, set up in the shotgun. Paulson looking to throw from his own end zone. Raiders get yes! him, but it's down and around the one-yard line. Woo-hoo. Another big sack, and the Raiders, are, or the Menominee Mustangs, are going to be in their own end zone this time. Third down and 14 coming up for Menominee, and the Hounds are going to be let loose yeah. on this one. 7.30 left in the football game. The Hudson Raiders leading it 27-7 over Menominee. Larson is the receiver to the right. Have another man to the left. Paulson back to throw. Paulson lets it rip for Larson, and Larson can't bring it down. Overshot him, and the punt team is going to have to come out for Menominee. Paulson staying in there. Either just well, nope, they do send not. the punt team onto the field. You can't fake it from there. No. <laughs> I, you know. I thought it might be one of those last ditch efforts. We're gonna go ahead and go for it on fourth and fourteen. You know, and, you, but you're uh, down by three touchdowns. You know, realistically, you you may not see the ball three more times. No, nope. not with seven fourteen left unless the Raiders but really start falling apart. But Hudson Raiders have both their return men on the thirty five yard line. Punts away. Oh, and you get good field position out of this. Field it at the 30. Miles Lewis. By Miles Lewis. He's got some room. Can he Lewis get the corner? Makes a guy miss Touchdown! It. Touchdown, Raiders. Miles There's Lewis. Your dagger. We talked about that return game tonight. We were waiting for him to strike. They finally do. Miles Lewis made a couple guys miss and then danced along the sideline to get into the end zone, and that's going to put the football game away. And as Joel said, there is your <laughs> dagger. 33-7 to Hudson. Somerville on to the field to kick the and extra the, the, point. The crowd is starting to file out here. The Menominee faithful headed for the exits. Exactly seven minutes to win this football game. There's got to be some relief on the Hudson sideline right now. Snap is good. Ooh. Kick is up. <laughs> Menominee puts some pressure on, but Somerville gets it through, and it's a 34-7 to Hudson lead. And I think a lot of these Hudson folks had some confidence in tonight's game, but there weren't a whole lot of folks thinking it was going to be a 28-point game. You know, we talked about this in private. You know, we thought about the game, and we thought, you know, we looked at the numbers where we didn't just didn't know how Hudson could lose this game, but we said it is Menominee, mm -hmm. and I think you're seeing this is just, you know, Hudson's a better football team. Yeah, this is uh, 
This is by far the best Hudson football team I've ever seen. And they are seven minutes away from going undefeated for the first time in almost 50 years and seven minutes away from winning their first outright Big Rivers Conference championship. And, you know, I, I've talked to a lot of the kids, my son included, on that 2009 team that, you know, kind of they all kind of agreed that this this is the next step. This is what this is the team that's going to take that next step, you know, win that second level game, you know, maybe make some more things happen, you know, get that outright conference championship. And, you know, there's not, you'd think maybe there'd be a little bit of, you know, jealousy or a little resentment, and, you know, we don't want you to do that because we didn't do it. But they're all 100% behind this team, and they're all, well, some of them have brothers playing too. So, yep, you know, indeed. it's. And there's a lot of them here tonight. You know, my son drove from Stevens Point over here to watch the game tonight. Nathan Eby played on that team that went to Point a few years back. And how ironic he ends up there going to school. And then once again, the Raider kick coverage team just not letting anything happen. They haven't let anything happen all season no, long. they haven't. And like I said, that's the biggest difference between this team and teams that have seen the best. Is, you know, yeah, the kick returns, the touchdowns, are all that. But the kick coverage teams have done such a phenomenal job of pinning the opponents deep in their own territory and, and making them go the length of the field to score. I don't think anyone's taken it past the 30-yard line all season long. I don't remember. It may have happened, I, but if it yeah. happened, it didn't happen more than once or twice. Maybe they got it out there because of a penalty, maybe. I don't. Menominee sets up shop here in the 25-yard line. 6.54 left in the football game. And Paulson's going to pass it. Paulson in trouble. Paulson down. going down. Ethan Stanchek back there, number three. And Paulson is hurt. He's going to try to stay in the football game, but he's limping. And you know, this is the situation now. If you're Menominee, you got to keep your kids healthy. Indeed. You're, you know, this season's not over for you. No, they have a, a playoff run coming up for them. And this Menominee football team enters this game ranked number eighth in state in the AP poll. You know, a lot of people have uh, a lot of confidence in this now, Menominee th team going further. This should further. be a penalty against Menominee for having 12 men in the huddle. Paulson comes off the field. They'll bring in another quarterback. And as Joel said, they did have 12 men in the huddle, but doesn't matter. Raider defense. Just but still, I don't understand how that how is that not a penalty? It, well, it should have been. They had brought in the new quarterback, but Paulson stayed in the huddle. Third down and 18 coming up for the Mustangs. And more and more, the Menominee faithful are heading to the exit, trying to get a jump on the traffic. And here comes the Mustangs on third down and 18. And they're going to look in the throw here. And crush driven down. <laughs> that's is that's, no, that's Iverson, number two. Matt Iverson brings down the Mustang quarterback, and that's going to bring up fourth down and very long. The Menominee punt team onto the field. And once again, the Raider punt returners are going to be standing around the 35-yard line. You know, we talk about statement games. We've kind of brought it up throughout the season about you. Know, this is a state. This should be said. This is the statement game the Raiders needed to have. Another thing we talked about on the way over here tonight, Joel, is the Raiders have just put just about everybody away early all season long. The Rice Lake game was a competitive game into the fourth quarter, but other than that, they have just laid it on their opponent. And Lewis this time just calls for the fair catch. And we come into this game tonight, Menominee recognized by the AP polls, number eight, and the Hudson Raiders, number 10. You think that might have been discussed a few <laughs> times this season or this you know, week that, you know what, everybody thinks Menominee's better than you guys. You know, and I think that's, I, I, you know, my son brought up that very point. You know, I was talking about, we, you know, no respect, Hudson's a better team. He said, Dad, that's just the way they want it. He goes, the coaches feed off that. They, in that locker, and they're telling them, you know, nobody respects you. They think they're better than you are. You know, how, what are you guys going to do about it? Well, you know, right now you've got a 27-point lead. The Raiders put Mike Holmes on the shelf. They bring in Zastro to play quarterback, and Menominee calls a timeout. Yeah. They're going to talk it over. Looks like Hudson's bringing in a bunch of new players now. 
The Raiders making some substitutions, and again, we talked about it all season long. There's 41 seniors on this football team. Why not get each of them into the game, as many as you can at least, and let them enjoy this victory over what has been in this conference, the Big Bad Wolf, but the Hudson Raiders. This is an interesting stat for you. In the past four years now, this is the fifth year the Hudson Raiders have defeated Menominee every year. Menominee has only lost to one other team throughout this five seasons. They've lost one game to Chippewa Falls. Mm -hmm. Other than that, Man Hudson is the only team that's defeated them in five seasons. And, you know, since Hudson, that was Hudson's five, four years ago, or the, their first win in 2008, that was the first time Hudson had beat Menominee, and they haven't lost to him since. I think it's part of that, a lot of that's that mental you know, edge that we talk about, that mental part of the game that once you get past that, or now it's the next hurdle is going to be Steven's point. you got to get past that big bad wolf. They've ended the Raiders' season, I think, four of the last five years. Zastro. Under center and oh, almost the a ball fumble. came loose. <laughs> and that That's, was Koski. Was and he was kind of bobbling around, ended up picking up uh, – Seven yards on the play. And, you know, we got the Raiders' second-string offensive line in there, and, you know, I'd they're still moving the ball. I think this must be – it's got to be Menominee's – I believe it's their second-string defense is getting in there, too. I think, it's, again, it's – nobody wants to get anybody hurt. Let's just – the game's yeah. been decided. Let's just run this thing out. Zastro will oh. let the clock wind all the way down, but I'm guessing – Hudson must, I think we got a Hudson player lined up in the neutral zone. Somebody wasn't set up right. Who are they going to go from? <laughs> call against Hudson. Oh. Second and three to second and eight. Yep, guy lined up in the neutral zone. Both of these well, teams likely yeah. to be hosting their first round playoff game. Next week, obviously, the Raiders are going to be hosting, and I'm pretty sure Menominee will be. This is their only loss of the season. So both these teams will be on their home field next Friday night for the first round of playoffs. I took a look at uh, some of the likely opponents for the Raiders, and I'm going to make a prediction. And I believe the Hudson Raiders will face D.C. Everest. And it's Koski. Koski still oh. running. Koski he gets picks the first up the down. first down. <laughs> The Hudson pa Raider parents are having a good time here tonight. Doing a little cheering back and forth with the student section, and now they're getting into a little Raider first down, something you hear a lot at the home games. Yeah, they seem a little more relaxed over there now <laughs> than they did a couple hours ago. Well, you know, like you said earlier, the, a lot of the parents had a lot of confidence going into this, but it was that quiet confidence. We just we don't know anything can happen. We've seen it too many times. Zastro comes in with the play. Not many, not much time left here. I think we may get a delay. Yep, there it is. You watch that official in the back, and he had started moving his hands, meaning there's only five seconds left in the play clock. And Zastro had, I don't think he even saw him. And he was being very demonstrative with his motion too. A lot of times, he's over there, you know, yep. well, counting it off here. He was way up here counting. It. There's yep. no excuse for not seeing it, but. He certainly you know. wasn't hiding the signal, <laughs> no. and that's, that's a learning thing no, there for Zastro. And I think it's one of these things where, you know, Hudson has never been a team that wants to pour it on or pile it onto a team. So, you know, I know it's not going to hurt their feelings if they don't score here, but they would like to run out the clock. Yep. Zastro to Koski. Koski again. Koski not gonna going down. Koski's going to go down. That's very, wow. very smart. Koski could have taken that to the house. He slowed up. <laughs> And allowed himself to be tackled. He it could have scored a touchdown there. It certainly there. looked like he did. Oh, he did. There's no <laughs> doubt. He turned around and surveyed the defense and went down. He could have gone in untouched there. I don't know. I mean, they can't just take a knee and knee this thing out. No, but if they are able to run two or three I mean, more plays, it's going to take another minute and a half that, off the clock. That, that winds the – and Hudson's going to go into the victory formation. 2.45 left in this game. The Raiders will go into victory formation. I guess they I assume Menominee will do the same. They're going to wait until the back judge starts to cut, starts his count. There we go. That's one of those things that uh, a very classy move by Coach Cowles and the Hudson Raiders because they are going to give this ball back to Menominee. And 
you have to assume that if you're Joe Labuda and you see what the Raiders just did, that they, they really should do the same thing when they get the ball back here. Clock ticking at 214. Second down and goal coming up for Hudson, but Hudson has moved into the victory formation and is likely to knee the football once again here on second down. And Zastro will do that. Clock ticking at 154. And I believe it's safe to start celebrating, Mr. Eby. I think you're right. So we got to think about next week. We'll be back at Newton Field. I'm assuming it'll be a Friday night game. It'll be a Friday night game at Newton Field, and my prediction is D.C. Everest. Uh, we'll get a look at the bracket probably on Monday. And there's a good chance that we've been kind of been visiting with some of the crowd here tonight. We've been out here calling this game amongst the crowd. And uh, there's a really good chance we're going to have point in the second round, even though both teams are undefeated. The way that the brackets are built geographically it's kind of tough for a team in the northern half of the state because there's just not that many Division I teams out there. Um, there's a good chance we'll be playing Stevens Point in the second round if we're able to advance next week. And, and again, that's one of those teams that, as you said, has ended the Raiders' season so many times. It'd be nice to bring this football team up against those Steven Point players and uh, make something happen and this it's, year. It's not going to get any easier because if they beat Stevens Point, let's just say they do, they're going to have to play like Bayport or Appleton North get yeah. to Madison. It's going to be a difficult road for these Raiders despite having such a dominating season and being undefeated just because of the way that the geography works. This bracket is not going to be easy. It'll be interesting to see what it looks like on Monday when it comes out, but I can guarantee you there's going to be a lot of Hudson folks that are not going to be happy with it because it's going to be a tough road no matter what. Yep, yep, no. Yep. But, you know, you got to play them sometime. Yep, you so. do have to play them sometime. Now let's see what Labuda does here. Hudson's defense is now out of the field with 41 seconds to go. 41 seconds remaining. The Raiders could have scored easily there, and they held up. So, Chris, if I wanted to get a copy of this game, how would I do that? Well, Joel, this is going to be a very popular game for the folks out there in Hudson, and a 34-7 to shellacking of Menominee. If you want a copy of this football game, give us an email at info at riverchannel.org. Or you can give us a call, 715-386-0115. You can order your copies. Single-game copies are $25 a piece. Or order the whole season, the entire season. You're going to get every single game on a DVD. So you're looking at at least nine games, probably 10, maybe 11, maybe 12. Plus you get an exclusive Highlight video, the best plays of the season. Um, and there's going to be a lot of them on this tape this year. The best plays of the season. The only way you can get it is if you buy the season package for $125. And, you know, Chris, you called it there. Menominee to take a knee the last two snaps. Again, they're just trying to get their team home and whole. Coaches will shake hands. And Cowles has really owned the Buddha in his career. Five straight five, victories. Five out of seven. So, I mean, it's... Oh, Menominee has another injured player. Although number 88 for the Raiders or for the Mustangs is being helped by other players. He's suited up. He's got his shoe off. He's got his ankle taped up. So I don't know what that's all about, but hopefully he'll be ready to go for next week because yeah, Menominee will be hosting a game as well. Yeah, both teams will be hosting next week as the first round of the playoffs get started. Menominee will be in Division Two. The Hudson Raiders will be in Division One. But both teams with great seasons. But we cannot let this go. The first Big Rivers Conference Championship for the Hudson Raider football team in history and their first undefeated regular season since the 1960s. And you know, how good is it to do it, too, here in Menominee? This was, like you said, the big bad wolf of the conference, you know, couldn't get past it, couldn't get past it. Always, there was that mental edge, oh, they play on turf. We got to go on there. Oh, they're so fast. And now the Hudson faithful are going to get to hear their hometown gritters sing the Hudson Rouser. One thing I would like to point out, Joel, this is probably the longest handshake session we've seen <laughs> all season. Both of these teams with tremendous respect for each other. You know, you hear a lot of bad talk back and forth, but obviously the guys in the field have a lot of respect for each other. Because we just, most of the time, they're through the line and we're done right now. But these guys are all taking time, shaking hands, you know, congratulating each other. And now they'll come over to James Gates. 
the Raider guys will come over. And again, I think, you know, they both, they understand how good of a team each one has and how, what the traditions, and you know, Hudson, you know, Miami's got the long lasting tradition, but Hudson has a new tradition. And Hudson's getting a lot of respect on the big rivers. And now, like I said, the whole team's gonna come over and shake hands. And again, Cowles brings this class to the organization. Such a big football game that both teams wanted to win very badly. The Raiders victorious, but both these teams really showed some great sportsmanship tonight. And the Raider fellas waiting for the rest of their teammates, and they're going to be celebrating over there with the student section. Time to sing the Hudson Rouser. Well, there's a couple of them are going to skip the old handshake, but everybody's coming over, though, to Mr. Gates. And, again, that's – And, you know, again, that's such a, you know, I don't care whose team you're on. That's a hard thing to deal with. It's a shame that uh, he wasn't on the field. And I talked to a lot of the Hudson players. They really, you know, they liked the opportunity that he wasn't on the field, but they wanted to play this football team at full strength. You know, and that's one thing that Cowles has preached. Like, we don't want to just beat you. We want to beat you when you're at your best. We don't want to have – there's no excuses. We go mano a mano on the field. If we win, you know, we hold our head up high and great. If you win, we hold our head up high and say, hey, you were better tonight. The Hudson Raiders win tonight at Menominee 34-7 to over the Menominee Mustangs. They wrap up their first ever outright Big Rivers Conference Championship and wrap up an undefeated regular season. The second season starts next week. We'll be back at Newton Field. Who knows who we're playing? We'll find out Monday. We'll see you next week at Newton Field. For Joel Eby, I'm Chris Larson. Thanks for watching this season. It's been great. We're ready for the playoffs.